everybody, it's time for a donation. Uh, Mark Daly wanted me to do my favorite live albums. He said, can you do your favorite top 10 live albums? Well, Mark, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to do a top 20 plus. I have honorary mentions that looks like it's a stack in front of me. It looks like it's more than 20. But first, I want to talk about this one right here. Most people would put this in their favorites. Most people put it at number one. I don't like this album. I love the album cover. And I think uh, quite a few of you get, you know, you, you, you look at this live album with your eyes, not your ears, because Bruce Dickinson sounds terrible on it. Now, I'll never forget the argument I had with this one maiden twat that wanted to fight me, and the AC just turned on. That's the noise. Uh, wanted to argue with me because I'm wrong for not liking this album. Now, the band sounds great, you know, but. They sound a little too great, too spot on on the album, where it's like, well, I might as well listen to the album. Because Bruce sounds horrible on this, man. His voice is fried. This one made in twat was like, he was like, that's the greatest album, live album ever made. And I was like, well, that's your opinion, dude. That's cool if you think so. And he goes, and you got to understand, Bruce Dickinson was on the road for like year, for many, many, many months that by the time he played the Long Beach Arena, his voice was fried. And I'm like, and this is a great live album. What a twat. He even agrees with me and has to like disagree with me. All right, now, these are honorary mentions now. This may be, and the thing is, this past Friday, I took two live albums to my friend's house, and we didn't get to hear them. I told him, I'll pick it up next week. Great guy, takes care of vinyls. I've known him for 30 years. None. But since I don't have it, I'll hold up what it came in. The Sabotage box set, the live show from, um, well, it just says North American Tour, but we all know it's Asbury Park. And I have seen, I think it was a comment on YouTube, somebody say, well, it was taken from, uh, you know, this source, that source, it's garbage. I'm like, sounds great to me, dude. And to me, dude, I mean, seriously, I love Live at Last, which I don't have here, or Live Evil. I love the Live Evil, but I would put Live at Hammersmith over Live Evil. Uh, but anyway, let's just keep going. I love all Sabbath live albums, but I would say uh, that one, that's, that New Jersey one's my favorite now. This is disgraceful that it's an honorary mention. This should be in my top 20, but my 20, I like more than this one, but Live and Dangerous is awesome from Thin Lizzy. And this one, too, is very underrated. Nobody talks about Thin Lizzy life. This is a great album, man. The version of uh, Got to Give It Up on that is amazing. Now, this one that came out later, Still Dangerous. Awesome live album, it has Opium Trail, which is one of my favorite songs. And uh, it's awesome. Honorary Mention. I did an episode on this one. I love this album, Get Your Yaya's Out. Honorary Mention, didn't make my top 20, but I love it. All these I love, all of them. Some Enchanted Evening, Blur the Cult, phenomenal, as well as On Your Feet, On Your Knees. Uh, this is a record store day exclusive. I love this album. Cheap Trick. It was back in 77 at the Whiskey of Go-Go. Amazing live stuff. And also, uh, I would say Budokan 2 was really good, which I, I forgot to get. Hey, look, I'm wearing it. Armored Saint. This, this was released a few, uh, um, not too long ago. Carp Nocturne. This is probably, there's no album, live album. Um, or, uh, later than this in my collection here. Oh man. Though it's not really a live album, it's more of a TV show, but it is played live. Uh, this is a 68, 69 comeback special from Elvis. Phenomenal. I gotta go, I gotta keep rolling, man. This will be a very long video. Wings Over America, phenomenal. This to me was Paul McCartney and Wings at their peak, I believe. Was it Venus and Mars? I can't remember what tour it was. Oh man, I got the box of this one. This is live in Athens, Iced Earth. This is a lot. How many albums is this? I think three or four. Uh, three, three vinyls. Great, great stuff. Amazing album, actually. Oh man, can you believe Rush? All the world's a stage didn't make my list, but yet another Rush album made my list. Most people say this is the best Rush out live album. To me, it's the second best. But I love it. I love it. Oh, fuck, man. Frantic Comes Alive. One of the greatest live albums, but it didn't make my top 20. 
But the, you know, when he does that, do you feel like I do? And it slows down. He's doing the talk talk. That live vibe. Even though I don't even know if it's totally live, but I don't care. Oh man, why didn't this? I mean, goddamn, man, this album is so good. Live Bullet, Bob Seger. It's amazing how many great live albums. Oh, here's one from the Volume Four box set, which is um, Live in the UK '73. Some of Live at Last is on this. Phenomenal. All right, and the last honorary mention, Deep Purple. No, it's actually not the last. I got a couple CDs here. Made in Japan. Awesome. I love Made in Europe as well. Those are great. Um, that's a great one. This is the best to me. Led Zeppelin live album blows away. Song makes the same. How the West was won. I need to get that on vinyl. And the last honorary mention. The Allman Brothers, live at the Fillmore. Great stuff, man. That long-ass version of Wicked Whippin' Post, amazing. Now, here we go. Now, I'm not going to say number 20, number 19, because I'm going to lose count. I'm, I'm going to do it all jumbled. So let's just, hey, everybody at home, keep score. All right, at the 20, I guess, of course. Pat Travers, live, get what you know. This album, from beginning to end, I'm telling you, all these albums are number one to me. They're just so good. Go, go for what you know, man. Fucking uh, Stevie, Boo Boo, Malco, The Lights, Making Magic, uh, Heat in the Street, Hooked on Music, amazing stuff. All right, now this one is interesting. Most of my stuff is from the eight, uh, 70s, but this is recorded in the 80s, but it didn't come out until I think 90s or early 2000s. Live at Hammersmith, but Really, I'm going to have to say it's a tie between this and this because they're both equally amazing. Live at the Marquee is just great performance from Twisted Sister. Amazing stuff. All right. Then we got, oh, this is a great one, man. Alcatraz, Live Sentence. Definitely in my top 20. Love Evil Eye on here and the rainbow covers and, of course, the songs off No Polo for Rock and Roll. Ingve Malmsteen fucking amazing and grab bonnet man a lot of people would say you know ario sucks because they think of the power ballads but in the 70s they were a hard rocking blue collar killer band and this album just rules from beginning to end like you do 157 golden country riding the storm out uh, son of a poor man i believe our time is going to come gary richard at guitar solo flying turkey trot Lay Me Down, every song. Being Kind can hurt someone sometimes. Fuck. Another live album I left at my friend's house is Ozzy Live. I prefer it over Tribute. It was a live album that kind of went under the radar. It was kind of like a bonus disc on the box set, but they did release a limited edition live one. Though it wouldn't make my top 20, but I still love it. But an Ozzy Live album did make my top 20. I absolutely love Speak to the Devil. Yeah, it's touched up in the studio, but I don't care. I really don't care. I think this is a phenomenal live album. Brad Gillis, Tommy Aldrin, Rudy Sarver just had a little time to learn these songs, and they fucking crushed it. All right. Ugh. Oh. Man. Classic beyond classic. Band of Gypsies. Machine Gun, man. This is so good, man. Who knows? Changes, Power of the Soul, Message to Love. we got to live again. Jimi Hendrix, Band of Gypsies. Definitely in my top 20 live albums. Kiss Alive 2. Awesome. Though you know Kiss Alive 1, I like more. There's a lot, of, quite a few people that like Kiss Alive 2 more, which is cool. This is a great live album. I love it. Even though it's not alive. I don't care. It's good shit. It's historic. It's KISS. 70s KISS. Does no wrong. Unless you talk about some of those solo albums. Oh, man. God. I, I look at this album and I'm thinking, I'm thinking just like all the other ones. It should be in my top ten. Fog Hat Live. I just want to make love to you. And fucking Home in My Hand, Fool for the City. Uh, Honey Hush, which is Train Kept Rolling, Slow Ride, and Road Fever, solid, killer, killer live album. Ah, yes. 
Tokyo tapes, Scorpion, my favorite era, with Louis John Roth. My only complaint about this, it doesn't have a, a sales account. Or, um, what else? Uh, what's the other one? Catch a Train is not on there. Quite a few killer ones, for, but I still love the fuck out of this album. Enough to put it in my top 20. Are we in the top 10? No. We're not in the top 10 yet. This one, I remember this one almost made my top 10. This is 11. I know this now. This is 11. But it was hard to keep this off my top 10. One of the greatest live albums ever. Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush Live. What an album. The, the version of uh, Johnny B. Good is just too fucking killer, man. Uh, Dragonfly, The Answer, you know, uh, talk about feeling great cover of um, Purple Haze. Frank Marino's beyond overrated. All right, now we're going into the top ten. The reason that I grabbed this, this is not the album I'm going to represent because this is not a live album, though it has a lot of live songs and stuff. But I can't find my live at Leeds. I'm looking for it. You know, I recently moved and I put and, and I know live at Leeds is in my collection. I just don't know where. It got lumped into another letter. Because I searched all the W's and it's not in there. But not this one, though. I love this, but not that one. Who Live at Leeds. Phenomenal. That one made my top ten. These are all my top tens now. So I did an episode on this one. Ted Nugent, Double Live Gonzo. I can give a rat's ass about the human being or whatever the fuck he thinks. It's all about the music. And this album... From start to finish, man, crushing, crushing. What an insane guitar player this guy is. And insane front man with his crazy screaming and shit. And, you know, the intro to Wang Dang, Sweet Poo Tang, beyond, beyond classic. Oh, man, another killer. Killer. Made my top ten live album. One, two, three, four. The Ramones, It's Alive. What an amazing, relentless, bash you over the face album that I can never, ever stop playing every single year. A few times a year, I always have to put on this. The classic original lineup. All four of these people have passed away. And I miss them most terribly. Because I would always go see them live and it just sucks not seeing them. All right. So, this band made my honorary mentions. With the album that most point at as their favorite live album from Rush. But my favorite live album from Rush is Exit Stage Left. I love all the world's stage. Don't get me wrong. But this album, man, I don't know. It's special to me, man. You know, the version of Xanadu and La Villa Strangiato. Every song on here. Not the biggest fan of Tom Thor Sawyer. I can do without that one. But phenomenal. All right. Oh, man. This is... Not only a great live album, it's historic. Cheap Trick at Budokan, man. And let me tell you something. I do love the Complete Concert. Awesome to have. And when it first came out, I stopped playing this. I would only play this one. But then, you know, I played this one again. And I said, you know what, man? I prefer this over Complete Concert. And I love the Complete Concert, but there's just something about... The track listing, and it's even the poppier songs. Like, Complete Concert has more of their heavier songs. But this, I don't know, there's just something so magical about At Budokan that it definitely made, what is it, top five? One, two, three, four, five. So it made number six. Now we're at the top five. Damn, all these should be number one. And I have yet to buy the... The enhanced version, which I gotta get. I gotta get it. No sleep till Hammersmith Motorhead. The first Motorhead album I ever bought. And it's so amazingly ripping. And funny thing about this, I learned from Ian Wadley from the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast. This was not recorded at the Hammersmith Odeon. It's like a joke or something. But either way, it's fucking raw. It's pissed off. Motorhead. Made my top five. No sleep, sleep timers because so good. Come on. ACDC, if you want blood. The first time I ever heard ACDC was this album. My friend bought the album. I went to his house. First time I heard it, I thought, well, the band's good, but I don't like that singer. He sounds like an alien. 
And now Bon Scott's one of my favorite singers and I worship him. First impressions are not very good. Especially in this case, because Bon rules. And this album, the, the version of the Jack. Man, the whole album, man. Riff Raff, Hang, Bad Place to Be, Bad Boy Boogie. That killer guitar solo on Let There Be Rock, High Voltage, Rocker. Whole lot of really da na 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 Angus. da na na Fucking awesome. All right. I know a lot of you put this one at number one. And I would love to, too. But there are two albums I would put above it. Kiss Alive. Fuck. This album, it, to me, man, every time I listen to this album, I feel like I'm there. It has that. That, that sound, that magic that really puts you in the seats, kind of like uh, Peter Frantum Comes Alive. It, it has that mm, just great atmosphere to this album. Phenomenal album, man. When every time, anytime somebody says Kiss Sucks, I listen to this and I go, <laughs> shit, son, Kiss rolls, especially this era, man. I love it. And, oh yeah, it was Touch Up in the Studio, except... Everything you hear here by Peter Chris is 100% live. They didn't have to touch up anything with Peter Chris. Fact. All right, last two. Ooh, and again, man, it was hard picking, you know, which one to go to number one. But And yeah, this may surprise a few of you out there for me to put it all the way at number two. But it's so special to me, man. Let us get one more for the road. I was raised... Hialeah, Florida, where I'm living again now. And, I, and, and all my friends back then were like, you know, rednecks. And I was raid, raised with Skinner and Almond Brothers, Molly Hatchet, Blackfoot, all that stuff. And uh, what can I say? Made it all the way. It would be number one if it weren't for the next one I'm going to pull up. But this is my favorite double live album because the next one's not a double live album. One more for the road, Pray, play it pretty for Atlanta. Extended version is awesome too, which I have on compact disc. All right, number one. Honestly, I would never ever forgive myself if I was not to ever put this at number one. Because to me, it is the, the best live album ever. And if it's not recorded totally live, I don't give a fuck. I really don't. What I understand is that the singer had laryngitis. So he had to redo it, and he redid it all in one take. That's what I heard. And I'm talking about the metal gods. Number one, Unleashed in the East. Not a bad fucking second on this album. Just so phenomenal. And this right here, I did an episode about it. This album has three tracks that aren't, aren't on the live. Uh, Rock Forever, Hellbent for Leather, and Beyond the Realms of Death. And I know the CD brings Starbreaker and Delivering the Goods. Um, but yeah, man, this is my favorite live album of all time, and I think it's going to stay that way forever. Nah, I'm kidding. I don't think that. I know that. Thank you so much, Mark Daly, for, um, for donating for me, uh, wanting to know my, my favorite live albums. I appreciate it, man. And anybody out there, that if, if you even think of writing in the comment section, hey, where's this live album that I didn't mention? It's up your ass. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to donate, i got a PayPal in the description below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. So, stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob.